mural done in partnership with the ICA. It is permitted as temporary art, and so it is slated to come down. Um, it would be this winter, would be the 18 months, um, because winter isn't the right time to take that down. It would instead come down in the fall. But we are exploring um, further partnership with the ICA to, instead of um, spend the money to wash that mural off, instead um, to replace that mural with uh, a new mural, um, again, sort of curated by a partnership with the ICA. Um, uh, very early discussions there, but um, hopefully there'll be something great. Uh, then also on art, um, as we've talked about before, there are two um, requests for qualifications, RFQs, that we put out in the aftermath of doing our public art uh, strategy. On those, as we mentioned before, we got 170 responses, and country is really, really um, both quantity and quality. The review panel um, that uh, represents a number of art institutions in the town was really impressed by the, by the quality. Um, we have selected out of that um, three artists for each of those RFQs. Um, those artists include um, artists from California, from London, um, a local artist, uh, Janet Eckelman, um, from Brookline. And all of those artists have now visited the Greenway um, taken a tour, had a chance to talk to staff, and then moved toward developing specific proposals that are due back um, in early summer. Um, then from art to the gala before I hand off to first um, Bob and then Linda on the other two topics. Um, the gala will be held um, on the Greenway this year. The gala is our um, most important single source of um, unrestricted funds. This is our fifth gala, um, and we're really excited to bring it on the Greenway in, in conversation with MASA, we've been in conversation with Wharf District Council, and it will be held um, over two days, um, May 13th and 14th, that's Monday and um, Tuesday, in a tent on the Greenway. So we're, we're quite excited about that. Um, and with that, why don't I hand off to um, Bob Stigler, um, our Superintendent of Maintenance and Security. Um, the, as many of you will have seen, um, and as we uh, talked about again at Warp District Council and other places, we are doing um, a significant um, set of repairs on the Rings Town. Um, it is all being done in house. Um, Bob is, is humble and may not take sufficient credit here. Um, they are doing uh, heroic work lifting 100,000 pounds of papers off to get in and work on things and then put those 100,000 pounds of papers back on. Um, Bob, why don't you go in greater detail? I can, I can add more plaudits in your document. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, uh, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. I, I won't take too long. Um, I, my counterpart in our culture is to show where it gets to talk about this as more often than I do, which is not necessarily that thing. But um, having a, a background in horticulture myself, I have to think that it's a lot easier to talk about uh, flowers and color and texture and mass and seasonal interest than it is to talk about the guts of the fountain and what we're doing about it. But I hope I can keep your interest. So, here we go. Um, <coughs> why is it the American looks? All right, off the cuff. Um, so over the past couple of years, we've started to have more and more failures of some equipment in the basin. Uh, beneath these papers, there is a lot going on, which you'll see as I as I progress through the slides. Um, and what that meant was we'd have to um, often unexpectedly have to fix something either in the middle of the day or, or more typically in the morning. We try to get it uh, back together by the time we want to so that we thought we would have on a hot summer, beautiful day when we're in the solar and saying, why is it not? So uh, it became apparent that we needed to go in and we need to uh, rebuild all of the 60 uh, solenoid valves that make these spots of water come up. Um, we needed to replace all the hoses um, that feed those uh, spouts. Um, and we needed to do a thorough cleaning. So that's, that was when we kind of embarked on this uh, spring. Fortunately, the weather is cooperating with us, so uh, it looks like we're in good shape. Um, the first thing we did, uh, one of the things we had to do was rebuild the 60 shooters, shooter valves. Um, on the left screen, you'll see one, uh, a couple of them partially apart, uh, and the 
little kit. There are about 12 parts, each one of these valves. On the right are some that have been uh, fully rebuilt and ready to install. Uh, we replaced all the arrows. As you will notice, there are some flexible hoses um, throughout the trenches here. There's about 700 meter feet of them all together. We bought spools of them, and they had to be cut to length exactly the same length, so the, the effect of each year would be the same. Um, y strainers, these uh, just uh, above Nick's hand, you'll see two sizes of Y strainers. Um, these are uh, hardware that is in the fountain that there's a screen inside. You have to disassemble it, clean them out, put them back together, and then reinstall them. We estimated that there were some 1,200 connections that we were taking apart and putting back together as part of this. The air manifolds. So this is a, an air-driven system. Uh, there's a big compressor in the vaults on the ground. The copper pipes that you see on the outsides of these um, trenches uh, are fully charged with 60 pounds per square inch of, of air. Um, when called upon, the air is then released and it actually draws up the column of water. Um, when they were installed originally, the um, the brackets that you see on the side wall are stainless steel. The straps that then connect the pipes to them were not stainless steel for some reason. They uh, used stainless steel. All of those failed. All of these uh, copper pipes were sitting on the bottom of the trenches. One of them was cracked. Um, so we knew that was something that we had to take care of as well, which we did. Um, the fog manifolds, there are nine fog manifolds in this as part of this fountain that emit fog. They have been failing as well. We replaced it three of the nine so far. We have three more that we have to replace now. And we have this opportunity to do that. And also, there are, there are different hoses that feed that system. That system has uh, 2,500 pounds per square inch of air. It's a very high pressure system, so we will be replacing those hoses as well. <coughs> there are um, 120 kilolites um, in this fountain. Uh, a year ago, we kind of took just about all of them apart, refurbished many of them. Uh, now we are replacing four of them. They have absolutely need to be replaced. And that involves uh, an electrician. There's that little pot on the bottom that has the number S16. Uh, that's where the connections are made. Once you take that apart, you basically have to have an electrician make the connections for you. Um, introduce a new, uh, there's a, a liquid compound that then becomes jello like that seals everything. So we replace four of those. It was a crack, as I said, in one of the manifolds, so we had one come in. Repair that. And we thoroughly cleaned the fountain. We knew uh, over the past few years that uh, a lot of sediment and bottle caps and straws and children's toys and all kinds of things that uh, work its way through those very small cracks somehow. Um, so we've really, uh, I think we've taken out about 300 gallons of stuff from uh, the bottom of the fountain. That's you know, wind blown sediment from the bottom. So that's it. Um, I do want to reiterate that um, we have done this, done this all in house, except for a little work by an electrician and a little work by a plumber. Um, it was kind of uh, ominous when we took it on, but we knew we had to do it. Um, the weather's been really helpful. Um, and we're basically right on track. We have uh, about another three weeks, I think, of uh, putting all the papers back, which we've started recently. Um, it's really two projects. It's, the mechanical repairs are, are kind of simple and straightforward. It's getting to them, opening this up, and then putting it back together, and that takes more time than the actual repairs themselves. So um, we're looking forward to a, a relatively maintenance free summer this year, like the last two. Shall I say this about the presence? Thanks. I know the board will join me in not only thanking you, but the whole staff. I mean, it, 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 this has been remarkable how much money this would have cost if we had, if we had contracted out. Um, the, 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 I don't know if we got a contract with price, and basically we can make only materials to the tune of $30,000. Uh, yeah, I don't have a final, but that's what we have to do. It's between $100,000 and $30,000. Um, and did we get a quoted price? And what, what would not do this kind of maintenance, um, what they do provide an annual service that you can provide wet care, which is sort of an insurance program, and it's about $200,000 a year. 
so we in, in house with staff were able to do these kind of projects. It's also, I mean, then you bother for doing that presentation without your notes. Imagine how detailed it could have been with us. He presents the boards every week. <laughs> 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 Um, and um, Linda's going to talk about the carousel construction. Um, before you launch into that, let me just give a very quick update on um, we put out uh, requests just for the Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, they would just ask for me to do a brief um, progress report on the carousel construction that's underway. Uh, the site work is well underway. Commodore Builders is the prime contractor with Valley Crest Construction working with them. A lot of uh, initial demo that has to be done. And, Taking up the uh, the paving that's underneath uh, where the pavers are, getting the grading started. So that's the activity that's going on right now. Um, so far, they haven't found anything unexpected, which is always good. The weather had a gave us a little bit of a late, a slow start with the snow, but it's moving forward. Uh, one of the things I thought it's interesting too is that there was a fair amount of plant material on the site before they started, and our staff. Um, we're, we're able to find locations for many of them. Um, this is just a showing you one of the uh, uh, London plane trees that were in, was in the original carousel site. Uh, these are one where some of the trees down further on, on the promenade and the North District Parks were struggling, and so we were able to take those, relocate them, and this is a new tree. This was an existing tree that replaced one that uh, was not healthy. A lot of the understory plant material also was relocated in many places in the North District Park, so it's a nice story that the material was reused. Uh, the carousel frame itself is being fabricated by a company called Carousels and Carvings in uh, Ohio. They're probably 70% complete with doing it, uh, working into a lot of the, all of these terms I won't throw out, the, the sweeps and the rounding boards and the different elements in the motor housing, um, the tent. Um, we're in contact with tent company too. So that's well underway uh, now. We've been, don't get scared when you see this, this is just a demo. Uh, a, a number of the staff went up to a place called Port Lighting, which is up in Seabrook, New Hampshire. Um, they do lighting and sound installations really all over the country for major things. They're engaged to do assistance for us on the carousel. This is just a display panel that's showing lots of different kinds of lights and two, uh, different, that, that can be used. And so we took our, um, to make sure that we're not inheriting a system that's overly complicated or maintenance intensive. Um, unlike some of the facilities we did inherit, we're making sure this time and, and taking up um, the ops staff to make sure that, that we'll, that we can run the system that makes sense, they're easily maintainable. But it's gonna be a pretty cool system that will be um, flexible so it can be adaptable to different kinds of uses if there's a special party or a special event. Um, it won't always be playing the same. Uh, Calliope music over and over, it's a small world or anything like that, there'll be a lot of variability. Uh, the characters are um, probably 80% complete. These are some of the newer ones, maybe you've not seen images. Um, on the whale, you can't see the spout that's coming out of the top of them. I should know that all of these um, have not had the finished sort of automobile high test coat on the outside, which, which will sharpen the color just a little bit, so that coat does not have it, but it's the the barn owl, which will be, um, there'll be multiple ones of those around the interior on the second row in. The sea turtle um, will be really an incredible creature to ride, and it, it's also picking up on the connection with the turtle, <coughs> sea turtle that's in the aquarium. So part of the project was to make connections between um, other institutions so they could come ride the sea turtle here and then go visit it, the real one um, in Bud's aquarium. So that's pretty cool. Um, these are characters that are still in process. They're just showing you the white plaster coat that comes back. This, the peregrine falcon is, will probably be one of the biggest carousel animals anywhere almost in the world, given the size of it as a single ride. It's going to go up and down. Um, it's going to be extraordinary. It's one of a kind. Uh, there isn't anyone anywhere else. And it's also to sort of pick up on the peregrine falcons that nest in um, downtown Boston in the office buildings, just to sort of keep the story going about what this is about. Um, the two elements, the rides on the right, are ones in process, but they're one of the features of this carousel is it will be accessible um, to people with a range of sort of emotional, sensory, uh, physical disabilities. We work closely with the Institute for Human Centered Design in Boston, who are known all over the world about um, sort of uh, fine um, 
light touch gestures that can make a world of difference to people um, who have different kinds of issues that are challenging them. And this, uh, the seal is going to be, this is where it's going to be, uh, people in wheelchairs can come in and um, on this bench a seat flips up. So you can get a, a wheelchair in, in um, beside the seal, a companion can sit beside the person in the wheelchair. Also a companion can or cannot sit on the, and, and has a ride on the seal itself. So if they don't want to be in a ride that goes up and down, it's just, it's making it sort of everyone's part of the same um, ride. The, the rabbit, my babe, of course, this is one of the rabbits. Um, there's three rabbits, but this one um, is one that will be called a standard. It will not go up and down because what we understand sometimes people don't want to be in a ride, particularly some children that are, have some issues with um, um, some sort of cognitive issues don't want to go up and down. And this is one which will not go up and down, but it will be one that's really cool because it's going to have a bright orange carrot in its mouth. So it's going to be as special as the ones that go up and down. So we're trying to interject these. Um, throughout the carousel, and, and so it's, it's really for all people. Um, these are other decorative elements that Jeff Briggs has been carving. The one on the left that you see is green. It's just a mold that um, he does an original carving, um, carves this out all by hand, designs it by hand. And then this is replicated in fiberglass, and then it's painted and it's mounted. And this is just one of the ones on the interior of the carousel, not even on the exterior. Um, it's just the, the, the picture on the other side is showing the wrapping with mirror panels that will be on the inside of the carousel. This is a butterfly, one of the ones, the whole interior row will be 10 butterflies, three different kinds that will go up and down around the interior so that you'll see the wings and, and it'll be shown against the uh, glass. These are slightly smaller rides, great for little kids. Um, just another companion piece to, to the carousel work is getting an operator on board. So I just thought I'd tee this up for you to talk about a little bit. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, these are the six proposals that we received. Um, uh, pulling up uh, a level, we um, uh, we have done extensive research into the business model um, for this, and it was part of um, our promises that not only would this carousel be um, a spectacular addition to the Greenway, but that it would also make economic sense. Um, we are. Uh, we succeeded on fundraising for it, um, but that the ongoing operations of it need to also make sense for us financially. Um, we, uh, there are two models by which um, carousels are typically operated. They're often, they're often operated by a nonprofit like the, like the Conservancy. That remains a possibility. The other possibility is hiring a concessionaire. Um, fundamentally, this is a um, hospitality. Um, and so the proposals that you see here are from um, companies that uh, are kind of in the hospitality business. Um, in many cases, these are ones that we have experience with and they're great partners to us. Um, the, we are still in the process of interviews. Um, we, um, uh, but we're excited that the financial proposals back um, across the board here confirm the, the going assumption that um, net revenue in other words, after our expenses for maintenance, after our expenses for um, uh, you know, capital reserve, that this carousel will um, produce more revenue for the conservancy than the rental carousel out there. And as Linda has, has um, gone into um, so nicely, um, it will be just a, an absolutely wonderful addition. So we continue to go through this process. Um, we um, will uh, we still retain the possibility of, of um, operating it ourselves as we consider this, but um, we're also glad that we got both the range of proposals and um, quality proposals. I just sort of popped this up to see the interrelationship because the desire is to make sure we can get an operator on um, early enough that they can help influence or <coughs> tweaking the, the layout of the site or, or um, a su any supplemental food vending, um, tables and chairs layout, and, and so that's just showing um, all of the fabrication, the site work, and, the, and an operator on board is all um, targeting for um, a Labor Day opening. The, fir the first opening day for the public will be the 31st Saturday. 10 a.m. <laughs> and this is just the last slide. Um, uh, Laura Jasinski, who works for my staff, has said that people have talked about that there's a lot of signage on the site for the builder, but there's not enough about the carousel. And so, um, she's designed these um, wonderful um, 
panels that are going to be out of fabric that are going to wrap um, the outside of the construction site so people will understand why there are a lot of the access has been limited because we really need the full site to work it but these will all um, they'll be reusable but they're going to be because I've seen different numbers. If you could just tell us, with the park now, what, what is the total cost estimate of the carousel with the park? The, the, uh, the total construction cost is just slightly over $3 million. Including the park? Are there any other um, questions or issues that anybody the board wants to bring up? So thank you. Thank you for coming. It was a long meeting, but it was a lot, a lot of just the discussion. And we appreciate